This Thanksgiving, Libs won't be forgiving. On a Friday, a Yale psychiatry fellow joined MSNBC's Joy Reid. She needed it to discuss how to interact with MAGA members of your family this holiday season. Her advice, don't do it. Roll it, Esther. If you are going into a situation where you have family members, where you have close friends who you know have voted in ways that are against you, like what you said, against your livelihood, and it's completely fine to not be around those people and to tell them why, you know, to say, I have a problem with the way that you voted because it went against my very livelihood and I'm not going to be around you this holiday. I need to take some space for me. Mm, good for you. <laughs> you know, though, I bet her family's relieved. They were afraid to serve white meat because she'd think it's racist. <laughs> but she's a shrink, so let's explain it to her with shrink words. She's suffering from a narcissistic wound, an emotional trauma to the ego that happens when your inflated pride and self-worth is destroyed. It shouldn't happen with an election unless you make politics personal, which we don't do. See, normal people put politics in a box away from everything else. We try to, but the modern progressive infects all areas of your life with politics, and their inflated ego becomes angrily reactive if their assumptions aren't met. Whether it's at a soccer game, Thanksgiving dinner, or alone in their room with their cats, they can't escape the hell they've made, and they expect you to feel their pain. But you don't have to. You have a full, exciting life. Pity them for the smallness their lives have become, and then eat what would have been their dessert. <laughs> Mike, you brought this up earlier about losing friends and whatnot. I find that the people that I see that I used to know that are on Twitter and stuff, it's an ego issue. It's the inability to admit that they might be wrong. I'll even say somebody that you probably know, Sam Harris is like this. You've noticed that it's like, it's a very brittle thing for him to admit that he's wrong, so it's just the rest of the world. Yeah, I mean, there, he's in a grip of a religion. He doesn't think so, he thinks he's an atheist, but that's <laughs> the most dangerous religious zealot is somebody that doesn't even know they're in the grip of a woke religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the characteristics of totalitarianism is this hunt for heretics, and we've seen that from the Inquisition through the communists, through Nazis. We also see another characteristic is the politicization of everything in society. That's one of the characteristics of totalitarianism. So this idea that Thanksgiving dinner, but your, your soccer team or your church, like all these things need to adopt this woke totalitarianism. It's oppressive. I hope that this election marks an end to that. It needs to end it for all of our sanity. Yeah, I, I, I hope it does, but... <laughs> Dave, I'm assuming you have friends and relatives, yes. although I can't tell. Yeah, you, you never know. You seem like a shut-in. A bit. Yeah, yeah, alone. A lot, a lot of so, hoarders. A lot of hoarding lot of going hoarding, on. Yeah, yeah, got a lot yeah. of dead cats just <laughs> randomly in there. Yeah. Do you, uh, will you have this problem come Thanksgiving? No, I, I encourage people who think differently not to show up, honestly. <laughs> but I, I love that this is a mental health professional yes. telling you to be yeah. mentally unhealthy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, this is like going to rehab, and they're like, I know you're an alcoholic, but have you tried crack? <laughs> <laughs> It's insanity. And also, if you are going to go to somebody's for the holidays, you have to go to a Republican's because they own a house. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the type of humor that is just turns people off, Dave. <laughs> I can't. But, you, okay, so Kat, I just, I, this is the second time I've listened to this. Uh, she's using the word livelihood wrong. She's saying it, it, it like hurts their livelihood. Yeah. Does she know what that word means? I, and again, she's a shrink. I kind of thought that too. It's I think she thinks she means life. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I mean, this is what my whole book is about, is mm -hmm. how this is a problem. This is the wrong way to look at the world. And going back to the ego thing, there's research in the book so obvious, but that moral outrage is more often rooted in self-interest. Mm. So the more guilt you feel about not being able to do something about a problem, the more likely you are to direct it at someone else and you feel better when you do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the thing to do really is, the sad thing is for a lot of people, they do believe stuff like this is true. There's people who are really scared. Sadly, um, politics, fear is really motivating. And some people, have been, there's people who think that 
they're not gonna have human rights because of this election. Yeah. It's good to focus on what you have in common a little bit. Like say like, hey, like I also don't want my home to be invaded by a Russian army. You yeah. know, like <laughs> if I thought that would, if I thought your rights would be taken away, then I would not have voted for the it, yeah. people that Trump Project 2025, he said repeatedly like, no, that's not my thing. You know, I, I don't endorse that. People don't know that. Mm -hmm. So I think that focusing on what you have in common can be a good thing um, because this, some people are, are really scared. Yeah. They're really scared. And it's sad. It is sad for them, but not for us. Everything I think, no, I think it's sad. In your face, sad I, see, people. See, I completely disagree with that because you just said you just said that your side doesn't do that with yeah. that, and you just did that. No, but I was joking. Okay. I was right. joking. <laughs> I think that, you know, I think that we need to come together. I really, really do. Yeah, you know, uh, Tulsi, the, uh, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of people that can't, I, that lost a level of status. Think about the Republicans in 2016 who they saw this whole thing come in and it threatened them. And then they just became like, uh, look at Bill Crystal, mm -hmm. like somebody like that. It's like, all, they just went in the other direction because it was about a loss of status. So they needed to find their status yeah. somewhere else. Adam Kinzinger, yes. completely nuts. Liz Cheney, nuts. These, it's because Conway, what's his name, George Conway? George Conway, yeah. yes. He's on Ozempic. Yeah. He's still <laughs> ugly. I don't even have a question. Oh, my question is this. If you remove the left and right and just look at the hoaxes, yeah. that's kind of one way to do it. It's like these people lied to you about the polling and about Biden's status. Is that the way forward? Focus on the media's lies. Gosh, uh, there, there's a lot here. I mean, yeah, I think going back to what you originally said, there's a lot of ego involved. It really just exposes that these people care more about themselves and mm. their own status and position than they actually really care about what makes politics so personal, which is who we have in positions of power affects our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to Kat's point, we have to be able to come together around the things that we share in common, which is we are all Americans. Mm -hmm. and, and if we really care about each other in our country, let that be the starting point, freedom and peace and prosperity. Um, the thing that, that, that I first experienced when President Trump got elected in 2016, uh, I was invited to come and meet with him two weeks after the election, right before Thanksgiving here in uh, Trump Tower, first Democrat to go and see him. Mm -hmm. We had an hour long conversation about foreign policy. What's going on with Islamist terrorism? How do we deal with ISIS and Al-Qaeda in the Middle East? It was a fantastic conversation and very meaningful. Five minutes after I walked out the building, my phone blew up from uh, messages from my former Democrat colleagues in Congress, even some family members, friends. How dare you humanize yes, Donald Trump? The humanizing. Was the message that was throughout. And so it, it, it exposes their twisted mindset mm -hmm. uh, that, that it's not really about the issues they supposedly care about. It is about them, and it's about power. Yeah, yeah, you can't humanize it. clout, yeah. Too late. They tried to kill him. He's now a legend. Sorry, guys. All right, up next, a FEMA boss gets canned for her anti-Trump stand. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.